I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in the series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a little bit as I go. I am currently in Exodus. This will be chapter 34, but this chapter also contains portions of the Joseph Smith translation. The Joseph Smith translation, this is an inspired correction or translation of the Bible done by Joseph Smith in order to correct or restore those portions that had been lost over the years. The reason I have this book is that in the Bible published by the church, there are a number of Joseph Smith translations in the footnotes, which I have here. Oh, great, I just lost my place. I have highlighted them all in red in the footnotes so that they are easy for me to find. But not all the Joseph Smith translation is in the footnotes, and so I have this, which is the entire Joseph Smith translation. And so, anyways, let us read. This is a long chapter, so it may take two videos to get through. Let us begin. Chapter 34. Moses hews new tables of stone. He goes up into Mount Sinai for 40 days. The Lord proclaims his name and, attri and attributes and reveals his law. He makes another covenant with Israel. The skin of Moses' face shines and he wears a veil. Okay. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two, two tables of stone like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were the first were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount. Now this is a very detailed, a very uh, long Joseph Smith translation, not as long as some of the ones we've had in, in Genesis, but let us read, well, let us reread these first three verses in the Joseph Smith translation, or the first two verses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two other tables of stones, like unto the first, and I will write upon them also. the words of the law according as they were written at the first on the tables which thou breakest. But it shall not be according to the first, for I will take away the priesthood out of their midst. Therefore my holy order and uh, my holy order and the ordinances thereof shall not go before them, for my presence shall not go up in their midst lest I destroy them. But I will give unto them the law as at the first, but it shall be after the law of a carnal commandment. For I have sworn in my wrath that they shall not enter into my presence, into, the, into my rest in the days of their pilgrimage. Therefore do as I have commanded thee, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. This is an important change. This is an important addition. So remember, Moses went into the cloud. God gives him the law, and he gives him two tables of stone, which God had already written the law on. And Moses brings them down. He breaks them, and now God is saying, okay, you make tables of stone this time. God's not making the tables, but God is still writing the law on the tables. But he is not giving the same law. This is why we call this the lesser law or the law of carnal commandments. Because the law of Moses, the second law that he got, removed the priesthood, meaning the Melchizedek priesthood, the higher priesthood. It says, as he calls it, uh, my holy order. He takes that from among the people. What is this telling us? This is telling us that before this time, the intention was, as, we, as you may recall, the firstborn, the first man of every family was to be redeemed for the Lord. They were to belong to the Lord, meaning that the first of every family, at least, was supposed to have the priesthood. It was supposed to be general among the population. Remember, Abraham had the priesthood. Isaac had it. Jacob had it. All 12 of, sons, of Jacob's sons 
had the priesthood. They were all high priests after the order of Melchizedek. It is only because of the golden calf instant Israel has proven that they cannot handle the higher priesthood. If they were given that higher authority, it would destroy them. Some people can't handle the higher authority, the higher responsibility. Now, this doesn't mean that Melchizedek priesthood is removed completely from the earth. Moses still had it. Aaron was already ordained as a high priest in the Melchizedek priesthood. Joshua had the Melchizedek priesthood. There were a number of people who still had it, but it was no longer in the general population. There were select men who were given this priesthood. Most families did not have the priesthood in their home at this time anymore. The intention was for them to have it. God was going to give it. They were going to, as it says earlier, they were going to make them a nation of priests, meaning that all the men were going to have the priesthood. But because they proved they were incapable of handling the authority, it was taken. And you also, you may have noticed that before this point, the only people that were called as priests were Aaron and his sons. There was no mention of the Levites. That is the change that is being made here. We are taking the priesthood out from among the general population. And while a select few will still have the Melchizedek priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, or the lesser priesthood, is given only, will be given only to the Levites, as we will read later on. This is the change that is being talked about here. This is significant. This is important to know because a lot of people outside the church, a lot of other Christians will talk about how before Christ, only the Levites could have the priesthood. They do not make a distinction between the higher priesthood and the lesser priesthood, the Aaronic and Melchizedek. They, they don't make a distinction. And they fall into the what I've always considered a somewhat illogical conclusion that before the time of Moses, there either was no priesthood and they actually, I've had people tell me that there was no priesthood before the time of Moses because only Levites can have the priesthood, and there were no Levites before Moses, therefore there was no priesthood before Moses. Or they generally, most commonly, they don't even think about it, or they claim that uh, before that before Moses, there was the priesthood, people had the priesthood, but it was the same priesthood that the Levites would have. But we'll get into more detail on that in later chapters. I know I've only read three verses so far in this chapter, and we've already gotten quite a long video. So let us see if we can't get through a little bit more, and then we will finish the chapter out in the next video. Verse 4, And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. Okay. There is a Joseph Smith translation here. But uh, it just clarifies that Moses is the one that hews the tables of stone. So he... It, it, in the King James it says, and he hewed two tables, and Moses went up into the mount. And Joseph Smith switches that around, and Moses hewed two tables of stone, and he rose up early and went into the mount. So it just kind of switches it around, kind of clarifies who's the actor in this. So, anyways, verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will be and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generations 
And there, a brief, uh, a small Joseph Smith translation here in verse 7, he changes the word guilty to rebellious. So it's not just those who commit sin. It's those who rebel against God, who actively, see, you know, th these are the people that aren't just committing your daily offenses that, you know, small foibles of everybody that we're all trying to improve on. These are the people who choose to go against God. And I think that's an important distinction there, too. Verse 8. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Okay. We'll leave it there. I think that's good. We'll pick it up in the next video.